that one. I can't stress me a nigga. Yeah. 40 point in that cause I can buy me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Can you believe it? Hello, tribe. Surprise. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I want to say it in my Martin Lawrence voice. Merry. Well, <laughs> only my son would really understand that joke. And you know, my jokes are terrible. But Merry Christmas, you guys. Happy Christmas morning. I pray you guys are surrounded by your family and that you have gotten some really good gifts, okay? If you're not in the gift-giving spirit, I just really pray that you guys remember the reason for the season, darling, okay? <laughs> in any event, we're talking about this young lady right here. And that gentleman right there, I know you're probably thinking, Karima, what are we doing a video for today, darling? Why did you surprise us with a Young Miami video? Well, I've been thinking about it for some time now. I had made a couple of predictions in two videos prior. One of them was more than four months ago. And an, another one, I believe, was maybe a couple of, maybe a couple of months ago. It's a prediction that I made. And I wanted to follow back up on that prediction that I made on both um, Carisha and Lori Harvey. And I'm not the one to kind of toot my own horn and say I'm right. All right. Now, um, these two... <laughs> Energy, 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 energy. Okay, I want to do a, a a energetic reading. I want to share my prediction that I made, and I want to give you a warning before we even start. If you think this video is gonna be about uh, insulting her intelligence, if you think this video is gonna be about bashing her, shaming her reprimanding her, waving my old lady finger at her, saying, no, 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 young lady. Um, you got the wrong video. <laughs> That's not what this video is going to be about. We're doing an energetic reading. I want to kind of give you guys a different perspective on things because I got a phone call from someone who said, I want to know how you feel about this young Miami and P. Diddy thing. And I have a different take on it for two reasons. The first reason is Elder Eden reminds us that we too once was young and naive, okay? And older people just seem to shame people as if we too have never been young before. Like, they know it all. And young people think they know it all. So in fact, you got young and old people thinking they know it all, we know it all, you know it all. This goes back and forth and no one gets to learn anything. You must listen to me because I know it all. Because I have experience. You must listen to me because I'm old. And the young person's like, no, 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 I want to learn it on my own. That's what young people do, okay? <laughs> they think they know it all. And so what we're supposed to be doing as elders is guiding them and giving them the tools so that they can make their journey easier. Allow them to bump themselves and get bruises because the best experience is experience itself. However, when they go into their back pockets and they have the tools, they're able to navigate those waters. That's what we're supposed to be doing because there's going to be plenty of errors that they're going to make. Even in old age, we still make mistakes. That's what life is about, okay? These two are experimenting, love. And whether or not we agree with it or not, okay, this is what they got going on, the terms of their relationship. And this young lady here is not as young as most people want to assume she is. They forget she's 27, in according to Elder Eden, okay, she's past her maiden stages already. She's still in her mother stages, okay? So she's past her maiden stage, and we cannot force her into submission. <laughs> we can't, because she's past her maiden stage. 
And if you guys have been following the channel for, for long enough, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We're pulling from my book, The Return of the Divine Feminine. So you get it, right? So what is she doing here? If that's the question, what is she doing with this older man? This man who's going to take advantage of her and use her up for her energy and suck her life out of her, exchange her destinies and all of those things that I'm not saying I disagree with, darling. <laughs> but what is she doing with him? I want to give you a little bit of a different perspective. And I've been talking now for five minutes, so I'm hoping I'm getting into it. She's from Miami. Not the nice restaurants and the beaches that you think about when you think Miami. Miami is from the hood, darling. The hoods of Miami. Things are not always great in the hoods. She's from a place where there is poverty, lack, lack of resources, lack of education. And when you find that, you normally find violence in those kind of areas. Lack, violence, coincide one another. It can happen anywhere. But we're talking specifically the hood, darling. She's from the hood. Navigating the waters of this right here. It's a different Miami than you have in mind. She's growing up and grooming, developing and changing and rearranging and becoming in that part of Miami. How she navigates the world is from that perspective. The eyes that she sees through is from that perspective. Do you understand what that means? It means that her eyes and your eyes may not necessarily see the same thing. She's a mom times two. She's in her mother's stages. Someone called me and said, what do you think about this young Miami situation? Ready to get me to talk about this young girl, thinking I was going to shame her, degrade her into, into my way of thinking how young women should live. Well, she's past the maiden stages, darling. Okay? <laughs> I can't beat her into submission. I can give her the jewels of the elders. But this person who called me wanted me to believe that Miami was something else. This young woman is from the trenches, darling. So take yourself away from your suburban household and your gingerbreads and your two-parent household. Take yourself to Miami's hood, to her dinner table when she was 12 years old. Go to her hood and see what the grown folks are talking about. See where they're working. What's going on? Go to her hood. Put your suburban self in her hood and perhaps you will understand why she's decided to make the decision, decision to involve herself with this guy here. And if you've never lived in a project, so if you've never lived in a hood, if you've never ran down a pissy stairwell or jumped over a dead body or ran from gunshots, then perhaps you may not truly understand what she's looking for. But of course, you know I have a soft heart from the girls from the hood because I too am that, all right? No matter how far I move around the world, that is my origin, so I get it. She wants out. She wanted out when she signed that contract. If you've never lived in poverty before, you don't understand the need and the deep desire to want to give out, get out. So you might say she sold her soul to the devil. And a lot of people think that the guy sitting next to her is. But in order for you to understand what the motivating factors are, you have to think about where she comes from. Her reality is different than both yours and mine's. And her motivation might be different. And let us not forget, she is no longer a mating. She's not a maiden. So that changes things severely. Her options are changing. 
She's a mother times two. Did you get that part? A mother times two. A young woman on a record label that saw her as a way to make income. Okay, and perhaps signing that deal gave her a little bit of hope for the future. I want you to I want you to put yourself in this in her shoes for just a quick second. Have have some grace for her, okay? She's come a long way, and I can guarantee you, darling, that she has the intangibles. So she is rough around the edges. She's gonna make so many more mistakes. This ain't it, darling. This is what it's like when you're breaking the psychological chains of a four block radius. This is what it looks like. It's raw. Dirty, and sometimes it just doesn't make sense. In fact, it shouldn't make sense to us. You know why? <laughs> Because the dynamics of this relationship, it goes against all of our social norms, especially here on our level here, the civilian level. I'm going to call us the civilians, okay? Especially on our level here. At billionaire level, this is extremely normal, very normal. It's just that this billionaire happens to be one of those billionaires that we know all so well, because he's come from hip hop, so we know him. But this is very common in wealthy, in wealthy relationships. Okay. Now that I said all of that, I want to go into my prediction that I made a couple of months ago. I said to Miami. I said, "This message is to you. Do not lose your power. Do not start seeing yourself through someone else's eyes. The moment you see yourself through someone else's eyes is the moment you're going to lose power." I said that. I was specifically speaking to you because I knew what was going to happen. I know the honeybee very well. In my tribe, they also know the honeybee very well. If you read the book, *The Return of the Divine Feminine*, you understand that the chinchilla is a sign of the honeybee. It's a sign of the honeybee. The flashiness is a sign of the honeybee. Needing to go from flower to flower to flower is a sign of a honeybee. In order for you to win this, okay, I told you I was going to come with a different perspective. This is going to be different, so listen up. In order for you to win with the honeybee, okay, <laughs> darling, you're going to have to get stung, and that's the truth from Elder Eden. Once you get stung from the honeybee, it is from your hurt. It's from your hurt that you can understand his patterns, his ways of being, and then you can use that to combat it. But the honeybee is extremely smart. He'll keep coming back to sting, darling. Not only will he come back to sting, but he'll be grandiose. Here's what I want you to know about the honeybee. It's in the new book, so you're getting an exclusive. In order to win with the honeybee, darling, you have to. You have to get stung. It's the only way to win with the honeybee. The elder warns us about the honeybee. The only way to win is to get stung. Because it's from the pain that you feel of the sting that you will understand his patterns and the way he moves. You cannot effectively win this game with the honeybee. He's skilled. He's trained, and he knows exactly what he's doing. In order for you to win, and I say the word win specifically. In order for you to win, you have to leave one hundred percent healed. 
You have to be yourself. Your eyes need to be back in their sockets. You need to remember who you are. And you have to break it off in order for you to win. He needs to come knocking on your door. Yes. But how you win is you don't even answer. A man who values himself by the money in his wallet would always lose his wife to the pool boy. <laughs> that's not Elder Eda's wisdom. That's Karima's wisdom. Anyway, young lady, you could win this. You can survive. Be wise. Be smart. And understand that the longer you stay on, the more stings will follow. Until next time, I want you all to be empowered, to be inspired, and be well. <laughs>